many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a Commander Masters pre-constructed Commander deck? For the first time ever, a Master set has been released with corresponding Commander decks, and just like booster packs of the Masters sets, these Masters Commander decks come with premium pricing as well in order to, one would assume, reflect the premium quality and value of their contents. But when the base price on these decks appears to be a whopping $80 each, and the secondary market value has some exceeding $100, all for just a single commander deck, can even a premium quality construction justify such a high price tag? Even without markups, what exactly makes these commander decks worth double the price of the regular commander decks that are released, you know, every other week? All those answers and more are what's in store, so let's take a look. But you know, before we get started, there's something I've been thinking about lately, and it's how complicated our commander decks are. And yet we know and understand all of these cards, what they do, their interactions, their combos. A person can even sit down across from us with their commander deck, and even though it's not our cards, we know how they work and what they do with one another. The same's true for a lot of games. Think of how many Pokemon you have memorized, where their locations are in the games, what their move sets are. Skyrim, Elder Scrolls, insert game here. We have all this knowledge. If only we had used it to learn how to code and program, right? Well, what if I told you there was a game-like setting where you could learn Python and Go thanks to sponsor of today's video, Boot.dev. Boot.dev is an online self-paced system that feels like you're playing an RPG game. Students earn XP, levels, achievements, and complete quests to get top spots on the global leaderboard. Seriously, what a great way to learn a value skill. And unlike having all the Pokemon memorized or knowing how my Merfolk deck works, Boot.dev can actually lead to a great career. Programmers have amazing earning potential. According to Stack Overflow, the median salary for back-end developers in the United States in 2022 was over $100,000, and they often get to work from home. What's cool is, is that Boot.dev was created by Lane and Allen, who are huge Magic the Gathering fans. They personally hang out in the Boot.dev Discord community where you can get help whenever you need it. So learn an amazing and actually useful skill all while playing a game and make yourself more employable. What a cool idea. Just use my code Talarian to get 25% off your first payment. That means either 25% off your first month or if you sign up for a whole year, that gives you 25% off the whole year. Wow. Thank you, Boot.dev, for sponsoring this video. A Commander Masters Commander deck contains the following. One playable right out of the box Commander deck, which features 10 brand new Commander card designs, two foil legendary cards, and also includes one thick display Commander card, 10 double-sided tokens, a collector sample pack, helper card, life tracker, and a quote unquote deck box. Price? Well, we'll get to that in a moment. But first I'd like to note that the contents of this are more or less identical identical to every other Commander Precon deck. To compare, earlier this year, March of the Machines released its yearly Commander decks, and they contained 10 brand new Commander card designs, two foil legendary cards, the thick display Commander, sample pack, 10 double-sided tokens, helper card, life tracker, quote unquote deck box, and they also had an additional 10 plane chase cards, half of which were original designs, and also they had a planner die. The price at the time was about 40 to 44.99, but as of the filming of this video, the March of the Machines Commander decks can be purchased for 34.99. Of note is that last year we had premium Commander decks in the form of Warhammer 40K, and these actually had 42 brand new card designs in them. Them, as well as 100% new artwork. At the time, these commanded a premium price, but if you wanted to pick one up today, well, it would cost you about 45 bucks. Interesting to note. So how much does a Commander Masters Commander deck cost? Without an MSRP, we have no idea what these decks are supposed to be priced at, so all we have to go on is what they are selling for. And what are they selling for? Well, Card Kingdom, sponsor of this channel, is selling Eldrazi Unbound 
Bound for $134.99, Sliver Swarm for $124.99, Enduring Enchantments at $79.99, and Planeswalker Party for $69.99. Looking at the TCG Player Online Marketplace, we see they have Eldrazi Unbound for $129.95, Sliver Swarm for $111.99, and Planeswalker Party for, wow, only $64.75. Cool Stuff Inc. is selling the Eldrazi deck for $119, which is the same price they are asking for the Sliver deck. Both Enduring Enchantments and Planeswalker Party are at $69.99 there. And of course, our good friends at Amazon are currently letting the Sliver deck go for $104.98. They're asking $74.32 for Enduring Enchantments, and Planeswalker Party is $69. $69 and change. Interestingly, and I tried this over a couple days, I just have to go with what I'm seeing now, Eldrazi Unbound has no price. It's not available on Amazon. So I have no basis of reference on that deck here. So were these decks intended to be $60 decks where they just got marked up? Were they intended to be $80 decks and a few of them are so disappointing that many retailers are selling them for less? I don't know. I only know what prices places are charging for them, but I do know that even even the lowest of these prices is nearly double, if not double, what regular commander decks sell for. So just a superficial look at the contents show that these have exactly the same breakdown as the average $40 to $45 commander deck. In the case of March of the Machines commander precons, these actually have less if you count those plain chase cards. So it is reasonable, don't you think, to assume that if the breakdown of the number of reprints, the number of new card designs is exactly the same as the average priced commander deck, then it must be the contents themselves which warrant this premium pricing. <laughs> well, you know what they say when you assume, right? It means Wizards of the Coast makes an ass out of you and me, as you will soon see. I have reviewed a lot of commander precons over the years. Some are better than others, but for the most part, there is a pattern they all follow, a template, if you will. In looking these decks over, and I say this with complete sincerity, if these had been released with a standard commander set, I don't think I would have thought anything different was going on. Save, of course, for the fact the decks don't all share the same plane. The reprints are on par with what is normally reprinted in a $40 to $45 commander precon. The new card designs seem no different either. In fact, I mentioned the Warhammer, 40k decks, last year's premium deck designs that carried a premium price tag, well those decks had notably busted and more powerful than usual card designs in them, and spicy reprints, not to mention all the original art which justified the higher than regular price tag. Here I see none of that. The mana bases, for example, on these decks are as atrocious as ever. In fact, I'd argue that all but maybe the colorless Eldrazi deck, which gets a free pass because it's colorless, have worse than many, many other mana bases of Commander Precons that came before them. They couldn't even include the Battle Bond lands in these. It's premium priced, maybe throw in some shock lands, something. Not even a pain land? Come on. It's a poor quality design that can be bought for a couple of bucks. Let's dive into financial value. If you were to purchase the singles for these decks at the lowest possible price, as of the filming of this video, for each deck you would pay a little over $108 for Enduring Enchantments, $124.28 for Planeswalker Party, Sliver Swarm would run you $142.61, while Eldrazi Unbound would go up to $150.38. Again, I want to stress that these are based on pre-order prices. We've waited as we always do to about 24 hours ahead of launch, but these prices are likely going to drop like a rock the moment decks hit shelves. And these prices are based on the fact that it's 100 cards. Many of them are just 50 cent cards, dollar cards, dollar 50 cent cards. What happens if we eliminate all the bulk? If you were to look only at the value of cards worth $2 and up, then suddenly things change dramatically. Eldrazi Unbound would only have 16 cards worth that value, and the total non-bulk value 
value of the deck becomes $68.29. The most valuable card in the deck is just the Void Gorger at $11 and change. In fact, as you're about to see, most of the cards of value are the new designs, as some of the biggest reprints here were just It That Betrays and Forsaken Monument. I'm glad to have them reprinted, don't get me wrong, but I'm surprised we didn't get a big splashy Eldrazi or three, if you know what I mean. Enduring Enchantments has just 11 cards worth $2 or more in it, equaling a total value of $69.18. Battle at the Hell Vault is a whopping $17, nearly $18 card, as is the face commander of this deck, and that composes a lot of the value. There's really nothing in the way of impressive reprints here, which is a shame because there's a lot of cool things that could have been put in an enchantments build such as this. Ah, uh, my beloved Commodore Guff comes down to a Planeswalker party of only 14 cards, worth a total of $66.63. Big ticket item here is a reprint, the Chain Veil. Wow. And that's a hot card. It's relevant to the deck. In fact, this is one of the few decks where reprints actually are doing a lot of work. Its mana base at least had a Mystic Gate in it. Thank goodness. But unfortunately, most people's evaluation is that this is the weakest of the four decks. Coming out on top, understandably, is the Sliver Swarm deck with a total of 21 cards worth $2 or more that add up to, wow, $103.75. Really retain that value, though a quarter of it is tied up in the face commander, Sliver Grave Mother, a new Sliver Must Have All-Star, who is the one card that I will predict that if it comes down in price when these hit shelves, will soon climb way back up there. If you look at the breakdown of these cards, there's a lot of two and three dollar cards reprinted. So many of these Slivers just really needed a reprint, and that all adds up to this being the biggest financial boon of any of the decks. But is it really all that different than the average Commander pre-con at launch? I think it's also fair to examine not only what is in these Commander decks, but what is not in them. I have touched on the average, if not below average, nature of the mana bases for all but the Eldrazi deck. But can I point out that the Eldrazi deck has only 10 Eldrazi in it? Far from an unbound number of Eldrazi, as the name implies. Can you imagine saying, check out my awesome Goblin Commander deck? It has 90 cards that aren't goblins in it. It's my Goblin deck. Well, that's what the Eldrazi deck is saying here, and it's one of the better of these four Commander decks. The Slivers deck here has no Sliver Hive in its struggling mana base, a card that would have helped mana fixing greatly for every Sliver cast. Wouldn't a premium Master's Level Commander deck like this be the perfect place to reprint, I don't know, the first Sliver, a card that doesn't easily slot into most other products? Or maybe Sliver Legion, a classic reprint? All four of these decks lack many, if any, standout cards that would never be included in a non-Master set Commander product. Product. If you are going to charge this much for Master's Level Commander decks, then you better put some Master's Level reprints in them. Though never mind the average Commander pre-con, what about last year's premium pre-cons? Remember how I mentioned last year's premium Warhammer decks were originally sold for between $69 and $85 each? Well, they're now readily available for about 40 bucks. These days, there's just so many Commander decks, and there's so many, many being sold for a fraction of their initial over-the-counter price. These I'm showing you on screen are just some of the selections I found by digging around on Card Kingdom's website. And yes, they are my sponsor, but hey, go look at other stores. Look at your local game store. Just look and see that there are tons of awesome, really awesome Commander Precons going for like, some of these prices are 24 bucks a box, $29, 30, 34. For the price of just one of these Commander Masters Commander decks, you could pick up two of the Warhammer precons. You know, for 10 years now, I have reviewed every single Commander precon, and the grades have been consistently, almost overwhelmingly, A's. Maybe sometimes an A-, minus. maybe an individual deck here and there got a B, but overwhelmingly, I have touted the Commander Precon series not only as being one of the best products out there, but also the most consistent. Sure, I'll complain about the mana bases and the lack of high-end reprints, but for 40 bucks, it's hard to deny Commander Precons don't both serve as an excellent first purchase for someone brand new to the format, as well as something that has some great little treats for people who are already established. I have called these a product for everyone. Casuals can buy them, play them out of the box against each other, and players new and old can always find value in them. And when the Warhammer decks came out as premium-priced products last year, 
despite the high price. I examined the quality of their construction and deemed them excellent. I not only gave them A grades despite the price increase, but called them one of the best products of the entire year. And they were. The higher price reflected the higher quality of card design, new artwork on every card, and higher-end reprints. Sadly, I cannot do that here. Final conclusion. Commander Masters Commander decks are not worth it. They are not worth the markups being charged. And they are not worth the non-marked up price of $70 to $80. Commander Masters pre-cons are no more premium in design than the average Commander deck. At the regular Commander pre-con price, these might have continued to receive accolades from me, with Slivers and Eldrazi getting A's, maybe Planeswalkers and Enchantments getting a lower end B plus evaluation. But they would have continued the tradition of quality I've celebrated in this product line. No more. The grade here is a D for do not buy. I cannot in good conscience recommend this product to new players. I cannot in good conscience recommend this product to established players. And it absolutely breaks my heart to say that about my favorite product but the prices are unjustified. And in two weeks, we'll be previewing new Commander decks that are just as good. Just like we were previewing Commander decks that were just as good a few weeks ago with Lord of the Rings, and a few weeks before that with March of the Machine, and a few weeks before that with Phyrexia, all will be one and a few weeks before that as well. Buy one of those instead, or maybe you've got enough magic product already. Maybe this product isn't for you. The only reason these are not an outright fail is that these are, at their core, average Commander pre-cons. It's the same quality, it's just a different theme. And I just have to give the entire line of them a D for do not buy. And it's the first time I've ever done that for Commander Precons in 10 years of Tolarian Community College. The very first time. Sadly, I think there's many, many more instances like this to come as we're seeing prices increase, frequency increase. It's just getting ridiculous. But people still are going out and they're paying $80 for these, $90 for these, $100 and up for these. And it's not gonna stop until you wise up. And I hope very much this video was of some help to you. You can help me out right now greatly just by watching one more of my videos. Check out a Shuffle Up and Play. We got a new Commander episode with Voxy and Amy the Amazonian and Lexi that just came out a few days ago. I think it's one of my favorite episodes ever. The week before, we had Spice 8 Rack back. But if you don't want to watch Commander, we even did a Shuffle Up and Play on Flesh and Blood. We can go outside magic sometimes. If you'd like to learn how to play Flesh and Blood, I've got a video on that too. Hey, thanks once again to Boot.dev for sponsoring this video. Remember, when you play games, you learn all kinds of complex stuff. You commit to memory all kinds of useless skills, Pokemon, magic cards. What if you were learning like Python instead? Well, thanks to Boot.dev, now you can. Learn valuable programming skills all while playing an RPG-like game. Check out Boot.dev linked in this video's description. And if you use my code Tolarian, you get 25% off your first payment. Thank you, Boot.dev, for sponsoring this video.